watch the adapter be yeah. all right we got scp783 there was a crooked man um no idea oh this is actually a long one 13 minutes this is a one of one of the uh on on the longer side of it but let's uh let's check this out real quick a kindly looking old woman is carrying groceries into her home when she closes the door a crack forms in the wall and a tile slides down off her roof crashing to the ground and shattering the next day the local builder seems confused he just fixed a similar problem a week ago at another house and another the week before that. He'll patch this crack just like he did before and repair the roof, but as he does so, he can't help but think he'll be at another house with the same problem soon. Old people are like this sometimes though, breaking things on purpose to get someone to come visit them. Oh well, as long as the money is right, he'll keep doing the repairs. That evening, the old woman is in bed when she's woken up by something falling onto her face. No sir, that's the worst feeling bro, like if uh, like like debris gets in your face like your eye uh man no 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 a crack is opened in the ceiling right above her bed and plaster is falling on her what is happening to this house she would have to call the builder again in the morning and let him know that it was getting worse she gets up to clean the plaster dust off her face but stops halfway to the door was that a noise she heard it sounded like it was coming from downstairs another noise she definitely heard something is someone in her home? Hello? She cries out. Whoever you are, you better go. My husband is going to be home any moment, and he won't be happy. The noises seem to have stopped. Maybe she was imagining things. Who would rob a poor old woman, after all? She didn't have anything worth taking. She still needs to wash the plaster off her face. I was about to say, you just gonna leave that, that muck on your face? Then again, it's an old lady. The fact that you would even attack an old lady, bro, you don't got no morals, bro. What her SCP this is, we could twix, bro. That's... Come on, bro. Oh, she listens for a moment, and when she doesn't hear anything else, she opens the bedroom door and screams. The next day, a child stands in front of the house with a look of shock. Was there an earthquake? How could a house end up like this? They ring the doorbell, but there's no answer. They knock on the door and are surprised to find that the door is open. Grandma? The child cries into the quiet house. No response. The child enters and looks around. The house is a mess. Chunks of plaster have fallen off the walls and ceiling. Shell. So, so this kid didn't just walk into a, a. Oh, that's his grandma. Never mind. But still, you gonna walk into the house and not call no authorities? I think I'm calling it. But no, 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 no. The impulse and your. You might think like, oh my god, is my grandma okay? I need to go check. But at the same time, authorities. I don't know. That's tough. That's tough. You know what? I can understand why he would just walk in there. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not, I'm not about to sit here and say, like, he's dumb. Because, like, that's his grandma. But at the same time, it's like, dang, bro, like, you don't even know what's in there. Elves have fallen over, spilling their contents. And there's broken glass from shattered light bulbs everywhere. The boy looks up the stairs and can see that his grandma... And they don't look like he has a phone. Like, in order for him to contact the authorities, you probably have to walk all the way to the police station, which God knows how far that is, right? Mother's bedroom door is open, and the light is on. Grandma, are you up there? Still no response. The child nervously starts up the stairs, gripping the railing tight. They quietly make their way to the bedroom and step into the sliver of light coming from the cracked door. The child pushes the door open to find their grandmother on the floor. Only, it isn't their grandmother. Whatever this is looks like their grandmother, but like she has been stretched and twisted, her body bent at angles where no joints exist. The child is paralyzed with... <laughs> Yeah, ever yeah, y'all see when I was playing uh, y'all see when I was playing Psycho. Hold on, 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 real quick, hold on, real quick, hold on, real quick, hold on, real quick. Did y'all ever see when I was playing the game Psycho, and and when I folded that man? That's exactly what this looks like. Say, bro, hold on. Say you swear, bro. Say you swear. Let me see if I can find the footage for that. Let me see. Let me see. I'm definitely going to have to edit this video now. Oh, I definitely do still have this short film. Okay, I have a couple of things. When did we play that game? How long ago was that? Was this it? How long ago was it when I played that Psycho game? I'm trying to show y'all exactly what I'm talking about. I don't remember where it is. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Bro, where is that? 
Which stream is that? Hold on. See, now I want to find it. Now, now, now I actually want to find it. Hold on. Which stream was that? That was this stream. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in your hood. I'm in your block. Come get it. Look, bro. Look, 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 look. This is a, this is exactly this is exactly charts, bro. This is exactly what this SCP does, bro. You said what's it on YouTube? No, I haven't uploaded to YouTube. Yo, go to sleep, my guy. Go to sleep. Look at his hands, bro. This nigga near pump. What? Take this out of No way! No way! No way, bro! No way! There's no way that's the animation! Where you go, bro? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Come to the middle. Come to the middle. For some of y'all who didn't, for some of y'all who haven't seen the gameplay, that just spoiled like toward the ending pretty much, but bro. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> yeah. Fear, unable to do anything but stare. But the nightmare isn't over yet because their grandmother is still alive. Oh. Sadly, reports like these are all too common in this small town that is plagued by attacks from SCP-783, also known as the Crooked Man. SCP-783 is an extremely dangerous anomalous creature that is currently plaguing the population of Tembe, a small rural village in Oxfordshire, England. If y'all know that, why don't y'all just evacuate this specific area? Every 12 years during the fall and winter months, SCP-783 will engage in a period of hostile behavior that lasts for roughly 70 days, during which time it will target and attack people who are indoors and alone after sunset. Those targeted by SCP-783 will find that the building they are in rapidly deteriorates, causing damage and creating structural integrity issues. These often appear as cracks on the outside of the building that lead to the buildings taking on a crooked appearance. Unfortunately, while the SCP Foundation is aware of both the location and the periods within which SCP-783 operates, it has so far been unable to prevent any attacks. Additionally, the Foundation has yet to be able to produce either an image or even a physical description of SCP-783 due to the effect it has on recording equipment. Cameras set up to capture the anomaly. So you can't even see what it looks like? Wait, what is the thumbnail for the video? Wait, 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 wait. What? Hold on. Uh, okay. Okay. ...produce only distorted or corrupted footage, leaving its appearance a mystery. Victims targeted by SCP-783 meet a fate that is, in many ways, worse. I mean, it literally, right, it literally said, right, it literally said, if you live alone. As long as you don't live alone, you're cool in. You live alone... Yeah, I, can't, I can't, I can't help their you. bodies will experience you. extreme deformations, as their bones suffer dozens... Wow, wow, wow. ...of fractures and are stretched and twisted in various oh. unnatural directions. They are then healed by the rapid generation of cartilage and the growth of extra skin to cover the new elongated limbs, leaving the victims a malformed knot of gnarled extremities. Some of the cases are quite severe, with one victim having just their forearm extended to over 2.4 meters, and another who was left stretched to and they say, gum gum, <laughs> gum gum, <laughs> 12 and a half meters in height. Ew. Despite the gruesome injuries suffered, the majority of victims are still alive following the attacks, though they will more often than not be left completely paralyzed in a persistent vegetative Yo. state or both. 
27 victims of SCP-783 are currently being held in a long-term care facility within a wing of a local hospital that was requisitioned by the Foundation specifically for the care and treatment of 783 victims. Like many of the anomalies that the SCP Foundation investigates and contains, many of the residents of Tembe appear to have some awareness of the Crooked Man, and the anomaly has become something of a local boogeyman. Researchers have even documented local school children singing a nursery rhyme that appears connected and may even explain the origins of the creature. It goes, There lived a crooked man who made a crooked deal. He kept a crooked cane and his catch in crooked creel. He stole... There once was a crooked man who made a crooked deal. I don't play for Washington, but they call me Bill. If you come on my block, your head gonna get spilled. I'm not a murderer, but around here you get killed. Ah, nursery rhyme! Stole a crooked child who cried a crooked squeal. And that crooked little man was broken on the wheel. A month before a recent SCP-783 period of activity was to begin, a Class D personnel, D-209, was sent to live in a Foundation-owned home in the village. Audio and video recording equipment was set up throughout the house in case the D-Class was targeted, in the hopes that some information could be gleaned should something take place. 43 days after he began living in the house, something finally did. One evening while in bed reading a book, D-209 heard noises on the ground floor of the home. Cameras on the first floor experienced corruption and showed only a distortion moving through the house. When D-209 attempted to leave the- No, sir, you might as well at that point. Y'all ain't give him a blicky, a blicky on. He said, man with the guitar, and he said, chill right in the background. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that- <laughs> The bedroom and escaped the home. They immediately encountered SCP-783. During a period of time that lasted roughly five hours, their bones were broken numerous times and reset over and over, leaving D-209 a twisted mass of flesh and bone. Strangely, at the exact same time that D-209 was being attacked, all 27 of the living prior SCP-783 victims in the hospital experienced violent seizures, despite most of them having been declared functionally brain dead and the rest being totally paralyzed. Also concurrent with the attack was a seismic event on the outskirts of town, and the details revealed by this event were both illuminating and extremely disturbing. Foundation personnel were dispatched to the site of the seismic activity to investigate and determine if it was connected to SCP-783 in any way. There, they found a small group of angry townspeople, perhaps frustrated by seemingly unending paranormal events in their town and the lack of progress that had been made to stop them. After a tense standoff, SCP Agent Collins fired her service weapon into the air, and the crowd quickly scattered. Now, free of distraction, the agents could begin their investigation in earnest. They immediately spotted several objects sticking out of the earth. Upon closer inspection, these were identified as elongated human toes. A dig team was sent to the site, and by the next day, a mass grave had been uncovered that was filled with a twisted mass of what appeared to be victims of SCP-783. Yo, that sound full of savage. Are you telling me they took all the twisted loop-de-loops and they threw it out? <laughs> oh, I did not just call them twisty loop-de-loops, bro. <laughs> Yo. Yo, they threw them in the hole because they're different. That's crazy, bro. No way. Y'all are wild, man. Their mutated and drawn-out bodies were well-preserved despite being buried directly in the ground and had all been buried head down with their arms <laughs> I think I get thrown in talking about some <laughs> what you went for. Yeah, you know, I was just chilling, you know, I was playing some 2K, nigga came and twisted me up on God, and I ain't even do nothing, bro. Now I got this long-ass arm, nigga, on God, threw me in here. What you went for, champ? Yo. Ending deeper into the burial pit. As one researcher was attempting to take a tissue sample from one of the bodies, the ground beneath him gave way, and he fell into the pit. <laughs> he landed on the tangled mass of limbs. Ain't no way you got sucked in. Oh, they, they say, hey, listen, bro, we got another one, bro. Pull him in, bro. What you in for, coach? Which shifted under his weight, and he disappeared into the pit beneath them. Agent Collins immediately found a length of rope, tied it to her waist, and climbed into the pit with instructions to the on-site team to pull her back up when she signaled. Agent Collins descended into the pit beneath the bodies, and after several minutes, she was extracted, though without the missing researcher. At debriefing, she described how she found an anomalous location under the ground beneath 783's victims' corpses. 
What's up, bro? What's up? <laughs> Y'all goofy, bro. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey, hi. Like, relax, bro. And she was so rattled by what she saw that she was granted a temporary leave of absence. The Foundation had to know more, and a D-Class personnel was quickly selected for exploration of the underground anomaly. D-2172 was equipped with audio and video recording equipment, along with several scientific measurement tools, as well as a firearm, and was lowered down into the pit via crane. Their wired tether to the surface would both send the information they collected back, as well as serve as their lifeline to the surface. As D-2172 was lowered past the mass of corpses in <laughs> the darkness, they experienced a sense of vertigo before it was realized that the anomalous effects extended to gravity as well, which had become reversed, and that they would need to start climbing up in order to descend further into the pit. They soon climbed out of the hole surrounded by the reaching, extended arms of corpses and emerged into an open world with an overcast sky. It looked exactly like the... So these niggas, the, all right. Town of Tembi, with the same buildings present there as in our world. The world appeared to be uninhabited though, with no sign of the missing SCP Foundation researcher. D2172 nah, began- Nah, 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 there's no way that's on London. Bro, if he crawled into on London, there's no way that's on London. Y'all think that's on London? No way, bro, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. Investigating the buildings and found them all to be empty as well though they did unfortunately find signs of a struggle in one house, with what looked to be evidence of the missing researcher's demise. They continued exploring the area and found that the anomalous property... <laughs> Show me talking about when he came up and said... <laughs> ...the location extended to its borders, too. And as the D-Class walked north out of the town, after several kilometers, they found that they were now somehow back at the southern edge of the town. D-2172 was ordered to return to the entry point, but as they walked... They were suddenly impeded by the deformed body of an SCP-783 victim. That's. <laughs> he said, <"Hey>, "Listen, Coach, <laughs> you came in here. You're not leaving. On my extended body, you ain't going nowhere." <laughs> Stretched across the road in front of them, D-2172 drew and fired their weapon at the entity, but it didn't react, and they were forced to retreat into the nearby woods. After several minutes, they stopped to rest. And they spotted something else. In the distance, the D-Class saw No, bro, no, no. What is that, bro? Looked to be a giant white birch tree, and it was coming towards them. As the living tree approached, it became clear that it wasn't a tree at all. What looked like branches were extended. Hey, nigga, that's how that's this, this, bro. Oh god, bro. Bro, when I when I hop into bed, bro, when I hop into bed and I've been wearing socks all day and I finally take my socks off before I go to sleep, bro, I'll be wiggling my toes like it these, bro. It became clear that it wasn't a tree at all. What looked? I'll be wiggling my toes like those. Like branches were extended. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> that it was using to walk. The long Yo. branch-like fingers were coming out of the top of the tree where D two one seven two could see their origin. These branches were the elongated fingers of the missing SCP Foundation researcher. D-2172 turned to run as the giant living tree chased them back into the town, firing their weapon at the creature whenever they had the chance, but was unable to stop it. The visual feed was soon lost as the audio continued to broadcast the screams of D-2172. But this wasn't the end of the expedition. The on-site team was surprised to witness after several hours that the tether was pulled on twice, the signal that it should be reeled in. A medical team was sent to the site since it was assumed that D-2172 would need immediate care, and the team began reeling in the line. After several minutes, they spotted the harness that should have been strapped to D-2172, but with nothing in it. They continued to pull, but the harness became stuck on the mass of corpses in the pit. They then noticed that it wasn't actually stuck, there was a hand holding onto the harness for dear life. It was D-2172's hand. The team kept pulling as D-2172's arm kept stretching out of the pit to a length of over three meters. But eventually, the resistance became too much. D-2172 lost its grip and it- Say on God, that's not Luffy. Say on God, that's not Luffy. What's up, Anna? Was seen sinking back into the mass of corpses inside the pit. 
Following this expedition, it was determined that only special operations teams and mobile task forces would be used to explore the dangerous anomalous location in the future. At least three such expeditions have been undertaken, though the details remain classified for the time being, and perhaps it is for the best if they remain so. The SCP Foundation will continue to monitor the town of Tembe in an attempt to learn more about SCP-783 and hopefully discover a means to contain it and its related phenomena. Due to the difficulty in containing the anomaly, it has been classified as Keter, and a local building adjacent to the Tembe Hospital has been requisitioned and designated as Provisional Site 5 in order to accommodate the increased Foundation presence. If someone ever came in your chat or DMS you to young Ben, don't. He was sending furry. What? Okay, for sure. As the SCP Foundation continues to research this mysterious and highly dangerous anomaly, any victims of SCP-783 are to be retrieved, their injuries cataloged, and then their bodies are to be incinerated. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. That's fire. That's fire. Yeah. Keep that away from me. These last two SCPs, Time's Up and The Crooked Man. No, sir. I don't live alone, so he not, he not messing with me on God. He not, bro. Dr. Bob always coming with the fire, bro. GG, bro. You a real SCP one.